Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to Evening Devotion. Tonight we're going to be reading out of 2 Kings 3, 16 and 17. And he said, Thus saith the Lord, Make this valley full of ditches. For thus saith the Lord, Ye shall not see wind, neither shall ye see rain. Yet that valley shall be filled with water, that ye may drink, both ye and your cattle and your beasts. So he's telling them, You're not going to see any wind or rain coming. You're not going to see any storms. But that, that valley is going to fill up with water for you guys. Uh, and that's actually the two verses right there. So we'll go up. Let's see. We'll start in verse 10. And the king of Israel said, Alas, for the Lord has called these three kings together to deliver them into the hand of Moab. But Jehoshaphat said, is there no prophet of the Lord here that we may inquire of the Lord by him? So one of the servants of the king of Israel answered and said, Elisha, the son of Shaphat, is here, who poured water on the hands of Elijah. And Jehoshaphat said, The word of the Lord is with him. So the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat and the king of Edom went down to him. Then Elisha said to the king of Israel, What have I to do with you? How interesting. To the king of Israel, what have I to do with you? Go to the prophets of your father and the prophets of your mother. But the king of Israel said to him, No, for the Lord has called these three kings together to deliver them into the hand of Moab. So he went to Elisha because he couldn't go to the other ones, maybe because the other ones weren't actually prophets. And he knew this Elisha was. And Elisha said, As the Lord of hosts lives, before whom I stand, surely were it not that I regard the presence of Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, I would not look at you nor see you. He had a great deal of disdain for, the, for Jehoshaphat. Great deal. But now bring me a musician. Then it happened when the musician played that the hand of the Lord came upon him. And he said, Thus says the Lord, Make this valley full of ditches. For thus says the Lord, you shall not see wind, nor shall you see rain, yet that valley shall be filled with water, so that you, your cattle, and your animals may drink. And this is a simple matter in the sight of the Lord. He will also deliver the Moabites into your hand. Also, you shall attack every fortified city and every choice city, and shall cut down every good tree and stop up every spring of water and ruin every good piece of land with stones. Now it happened in the morning when the grain offering was offered that suddenly water came by way of Edom, and the land was filled with water. And when all the Moabites heard that the kings had come up to fight against them, all who were able to bear arms and older were gathered, and they stood at the border. Then they rose up early in the morning, and the sun was shining on the water, and the Moabites saw the water on the other side as red as blood, and they said, This is blood. The kings have surely struck swords and have killed one another. Now therefore Moab to the spoil. So when they came to the camp of Israel, Israel rose up and attacked the Moabites, so that they fled before them, and they entered their land, killing the Moabites. Then they destroyed the cities, and each man threw a stone on every good piece of land and filled it. And they stopped up all the springs of water and cut down all the good trees, but they left the stones of Ker Haraseth intact. However, the slingers surrounded and attacked it. Weird stuff happened back then, but it was really cool because of what the Lord was showing in those events. The armies of the three kings were famishing for want of water. God was about to send it, and in these words the prophet announced the coming blessing. Here was a case of human helplessness. Not a drop of water could all the valiant men procure from the skies or find in the wells of earth. Thus often the people of the Lord are at their wit's end. They see their vanity of the creature and learn experimentally where their help is to be found. Still the people were to make a believing preparation for the divine blessing. They were to dig the trenches in which the precious liquid would be held. The church must be her varied agent, must by her varied agencies, efforts and prayers make herself ready to be blessed. She must make the pools and the Lord will fill them. This must be done in faith, in the full assurance that the blessing is about to descend. By and by, there was a singular bestowal of the needed boon. Not as in Elijah's case did the shower pour from the clouds, but in a silent and mysterious manner the pools were filled. The Lord has his own sovereign modes of action. He is not tied to manner and time as we are, but doeth as he pleases among the sons of men. 
It is ours, thankfully, to receive from him and not to dictate to him. We must also notice the remarkable abundance of the supply. See, now there's a lot of people, let me back up for a second. There's a lot of people that are talking about that stuff. D dictate to God what you want. Command him to move so that he will move. Uh, there's a new, quote unquote, kind of use this term loosely, creature on the scene. A young black man that is doing that very thing. And it's a lie. We don't dictate to God. We must also notice the remarkable abundance of the supply. There was enough for the need of all. And so it is in the gospel blessings. All the wants of the congregation and of the entire church shall be met by the divine power in answer to prayer. And above all this, victory shall be speedily given to the armies of the Lord. What am I doing for Jesus? What trenches am I digging? O Lord, make me ready to receive the blessing which thou art so willing to bestow. And this is why when you ask for anything, when you come before the Lord with anything, give thanks immediately. Give thanks in advance. You already know he's going to answer. You don't know how he's going to answer. You don't know when he's going to answer. But give thanks in advance because you know he's going to answer. And he will answer in a perfect way, a way we don't understand, a way we may not realize. But it'll be a perfect way, exactly for what we need. A lot of people think if they don't get exactly what they want, there's something wrong with the person. If you pray for this and you don't get exactly that, you did something wrong. The Lord's upset with you. That's not true. The Lord answers in a better way. I don't know exactly what I want or need. I know what my desire is, but what I receive is going to be much better in response to that situation. What I receive is going to be more perfect than what I asked for. Now, sometimes we ask perfectly and the Lord answers perfectly. And it's, it's the same. But sometimes we ask imperfectly, but the Lord answers perfectly. And so we look at it, and it may not be what we thought it was going to be. But when we look at it closer, we realize that's, ex that, that's exactly what I needed. Perfect. Nailed it. This is where trust comes in. We have to trust the Lord. Lord, I don't know how you're going to do this. I, I don't know what you're going to do. But I trust that you are going to respond. So I thank you in advance for responding. And then you wait on the response. And when the response comes, give thanks again. But too, too often people look down on the response. They're ungrateful for what the Lord has done. Receive the blessing with thankfulness and move on. We have uh, uh, examples in the Old Testament, uh, in the Exodus, when the children of Israel were upset. We can't, we can't be sustained on this bread, this light bread, this manna. Doesn't fill us up. Yet the Lord fed it to them every single day. So the Lord was like, okay, brought a big old thing of quail in there. They're, they're picking them up and they're eating them. They're not even cooking it. They're eating it, shoving food in their mouth and still complaining while receiving the blessing. It's funny because to this day, that flock of quail still land in that spot that you can go there. There's a, there's a spot you can go to and they still come to that spot. That's where it happened to this very day, all these thousands of years later. But they complained with food in their mouths. So the Lord killed a bunch of them. I'm giving you, I'm giving you food only angels eat. I'm giving you manna and you're going to complain. You're getting something that no one else will ever get. Of course, now we have a different kind of manna. So he brought them, brought them what they wanted. He brought them, brought them meat. What's funny was they had animals. They actually had some animals with them. They could have just butchered the animals and had food because it talks about them doing that later on but he brought him meat he fed him okay here you go here's what you want wasn't good enough and so instead of giving us what we want if that's not what we need and the Lord knows he gives us what we need people will complain instead let's look at it and go you know what I got what I needed I'm happy that's perfect because if I'd have gotten more than that I might have abused it. I might have misused it. I might have been, it might have caused me to sin. But instead, the Lord gave me exactly what I needed. And, it, and, it, and we have to be thankful and learn to see that and be grateful that the Lord answered our prayer. Because he just as easily couldn't, didn't have to worry about doing that. Far too often, we think things ought to go a certain way. And a lot of people, when they don't get what they want, 
They're like, well, I, I go to God for these things, but I worship, and his role is guilty of this too, but I worship this thing or that thing for this other stuff. Israel had this big problem there for a long time in the prophets, the major prophets and the minor prophets of worshiping God, but they, for the harvest, they, because he is the God of the harvest, but for the harvest, they worship the queen of heaven or somebody else. See, the queen of heaven worship, the worship of Mary is what they call it now in some places. That's a very old uh, belief system. And it's wrong. It's condemned by God in Jeremiah. But they would go to God for this, but then they would go to this deity for this. And God called them out on it. Why do you go to this deity for that? I'm the one that gives you all of it because I'm the one that created all of it. Christians today, quote unquote, Christians today, are very similar in their understanding. They go to God for certain things, but they go to these other things for everything else. That's why you have Wiccans and witches and stuff like that in churches. It's all witchcraft. It's all divination. It's condemned by God. But they justify that. Well, I go to God for this, but I go to this for this. You go to what? Demons? Because that's there are no other gods. There's just demons. Or they even worse, they worship angels. And the Bible condemns wor angel worship. But they do it, Christians, knowingly. That's where divinity cards come from. That's where angel boards come from. It's just a, a Ouija board that they renamed. It's all it is. And you're not talking to angels. You're talking to demons. We know the name of the demon that governs that window into the, into the other realm. Because he's always present when anybody uses one of those things. It's ridiculous. So instead of doing that, let's go to God for everything. Let's turn to God for all things. Trust Jesus Christ for all things. And leave all that other false worship by the wayside. Throw that stuff off, cast it down, get rid of it, walk away. And go after the Lord. Because since he created it all, he's the one that provides it all. And since he provides it all, he's the one we need to go to to get it all. It's that simple. It's that easy. Now, there are people out there that may be listening to this that are involved in some of that other stuff. You have a very short period of time to repent of that. Change your mind. Turn away. Turn to the Lord. Get away from those things because they are condemned quite vehemently in the scriptures. But that's between you and him, not me, you and him. I'm going to trust the Lord for everything. I don't need to go to anything else and anyone else. I'm going to trust the Lord and believe in him. He will provide. And he does. I went out, did my maintenance today. I wasn't able to do some of it because I didn't have the right tool, but I did the other other one. And the Lord gave me strength to do it. Just like I prayed for. He held the rain off until I could finish it. And he's blessed the work of my hands. Go to the Lord for all things, all things. And you will see for yourself that he is the God of all things, and that Jesus Christ is our all in all, literally. I love you all very much. I bless you all in Jesus' name, and I'll see you in the next video.